48 hours tonight on CBS. Good morning. It is August 26, 2023. Welcome to CBS Saturday Morning. Election interference indictments. The last co-defendants accused of trying to overturn Georgia's 2020 election results surrender to authorities. We'll have the latest on the case that led to the first former president mugshots. Assassination denial. Vladimir Putin says he had no role in the plane crash believed to have killed a mercenary leader that once betrayed the Russian president. Find out what U.S. intelligence officials think happened. Right to repair. From farming equipment to cell phones, in many states, people are not able or permitted to make repairs, even on equipment they own. We'll look at the new laws trying to change that. And looking in Loch Ness, it's been centuries of searching, but now a new high-tech effort is underway to find proof Nessie existed. Find out the new science being used in the murky Scottish waters. But first, we begin this morning with a look at today's eye-opener. Your world in 90 seconds. Baseball fans expect fastballs, not bullets, but someone opened fire at the Chicago White Sox game Friday night. The shooting apparently happened somewhere in the left field bleachers. Maddox took a woman out of the stands who was shot in the leg. Take a look at this massive plume of smoke rolling off this fire at a refinery in Garyville, Louisiana. The fire sent plumes of smoke and chemicals into the air. Take a look at this video here. Homes and schools within two miles of this plant had to be evacuated. Power and lift off. NASA and SpaceX, the launch of the Crew 7 mission. Three astronauts and one cosmonaut to head to the International Space Station. All right, here's a real lesson to keep in your eyes on the road. This was in Vermont. A hot air balloon makes a safe emergency landing right in the middle of the highway. They were shooting for the field, but came up short. Wrestling fans are mourning the sudden passing of WWE star Bray Wyatt. The WWE did pay tribute to him tonight during SmackDown. Wyatt, whose real name was Wyndham Rotunda, was WWE champion in 2017. In San Francisco, a bridge <laughs> patrol officer went out of his way to grab a phone hanging on the ledge of the Golden Gate Bridge. Once he pulled the phone through, oh, there it is. Everybody cheered and congratulated the officer. Oh, my gosh. You would think a person was being rescued. I know. It shows how looking. much we rely on our phones. On to Detroit. Astros and Tigers tied up at one. Parker Meadows got called up earlier this week. His family in the crowd watching on. <laughs> this morning's eye opener is presented by Progressive, making it easy to bundle insurance. No better way to make an entrance than that. And I'll say, what a place to do it, because that's my hometown team. That's right. right. You just get called up, your family's Unreal. there. Yeah. Amazing. Unreal. 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 Welcome to the weekend, everyone. I'm Michelle Miller, along with Jeff Lauren, and Dana Jacobson. And this morning, we will ride the bus for an inside look at life as a minor league ball player. From low pay to long travel days, we will talk with one player who has done it for over a decade as he continues to pursue his childhood dream. Then we're going to take you underground to the largest cave chamber in North America. The so-called Big Room is just one of the wonders of Carlsbad Caverns, now celebrating a century under federal protection. Later, we're going to show you the caves and some of its winged residents. <laughs> then we will take you to Portugal, where Michelin-starred chef Joao Rodriguez is trying to reconnect diners to the origins of their food. We're going to go along for two parts of an extraordinary feast held in stunning locations across the country. And we'll wrap the morning up with an artist who nabbed two Grammy nominations for her last album. We'll get a return performance from Grace Potter right here in our Saturday session. That and so much more is all ahead.
But we begin with this morning's top story. The last of former President Donald Trump's co-defendants charged in a racketeering scheme to overturn Georgia's 2020 election results have surrendered. The last seven were booked at the Fulton County Jail ahead of Friday's noon deadline, including an Illinois pastor and a former publicist to Kanye West and R. Kelly. All but one of the 19 defendants were released from jail after being booked. Trump turned himself in on Thursday. It is the fourth time he's been charged in just five months. But in an unprecedented move, he became the first president in U.S. history to have a mugshot taken. It's the latest criminal case against Trump as he campaigns for a return to the White House. Scott McFarlane is in our nation's capital with more. Good morning, Scott. Dana, good morning for Donald Trump with four different criminal cases in four different cities. A tidal wave of deadlines, hearings, and arguments is about to form. All 19.